everybody and welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine. Thank you so much for being with me today. As you can see here, I have my colors all set up and ready to go. And I did mix these paint colors. They are all Basics Liquitex paints and I mixed them equal parts to my pouring medium. Uh, you can find my pouring medium recipe. I'll link to that with the ingredients in the description below. I mixed that equal parts and then uh, I mixed it thoroughly. And then I added spring water to consistency, which I made these colors a little bit thicker than the consistency of coffee creamer. And as you can see, we have four cups here. I am going to be doing a dirty flip cup with these four cups. And I knew that I wanted, I needed about um, 11 ounces for this painting total. And even though I wanted 11 ounces uh, to cover the canvas, I always like to make just a little extra just to make sure my edges are really covered. I just poured in a few drops of silicone. I'm talking two to four drops in selective colors, not any in my white. And so now I'm using my scale to measure out um, about three ounces per cup because I have four cups and I knew I wanted 12 ounces So that's about three ounces per cup. So that's what I'm doing here I have it on the scale and I'm pouring it in coming from high up so that those colors will plunge down in and you can see The cells already starting to develop a little just from that little bit of silicone that I put in there This is sped up for time purposes. Obviously. I wasn't working this fast multiple cups that I'm flipping I like to come in with this paint palette here and get the cup on there nicely and gently uh, scoot it off it can be a little bit of trial and error like that one there spilled a little bit but it's okay I'm working to uh, get some of it off there but for the most part I think it was it was saved I like using the palette um, it can get it really nice and snug on there. It's nice and thin and it works well for that purpose. Since I did have some extra paint, I'm using it to put it down here in select areas. This is just to help cover the canvas and will also help that paint flow when it is uh, when I flip the cups so it'll be it'll give it more of a wet texture to flow on instead of just the dry canvas whenever I have a bigger canvas too and multiple cups I tend to kind of scoot the cups in towards the middle and pull away so that I have the paint colors closer to each other it's just a personal preference I like to do it that way for when I go in to manipulate my paint around. I did choose to use a heat gun with this one and I did it here at this stage because I do find if you do it at this stage before you tilt too much, you can get bigger cells, which I did have. I do have some bigger cells in this one. Um, with some of my manipulating, I did work some of them out, um, but I do keep several nice big cells in this piece. And I've been using my heat gun a lot with this dimethicone silicone, but I think I'm gonna try my butane torch in some upcoming videos because I have been favoring that a lot. But you can see, I mean, just beautiful cells coming up with that heat gun in combination with the dimethicone silicone and it's a nice alternative to the butane torch if you don't want to have that open flame in your studio. And I encourage when you're manipulating, you know, it can be kind of daunting because you got this wet paint and it's going everywhere. I just really move slowly. I watch where I'm putting my hands around the canvas. I watch where the paint is going 
and I just take my time because this step is very important. This is where your paint is going. This is where you want it to live on your canvas. I didn't want to over tilt on this one, which is a thing that can happen and it was starting to happen in this painting. Um, so what I did was instead of tilting it more, I just let it down where it was and I take some of that extra paint that I still have left over and go in and fill any of those gaps that didn't have any paint. And you can get it to blend in quite nicely uh, with your paint that's already on the canvas um, and it's, it's not a big deal. did want the paint to flow over the sides of this one and so I am just going around making sure all the sides are nice and covered and scraping off that extra paint underneath so that um, it doesn't pull all my paint and colors over the sides. Really liking how this one came out. Um, I did use a very bright pink in there. With these colors I, I don't usually use one straight up color. I usually do mix them a couple hues together to get the color that I want and I was really happy with how the pink popped out in this one as well as that there's still a lot of teal in there too sometimes I lose my teals but I was really happy with the colors on this one and as you can see just still going around wiping that paint because it will keep sort of moving over the sides and you want to make sure you can get as much off before you set it aside to dry and I did want to see if I could get a few more cells to pop so I came back in with that heat gun on the low setting moving it, not keeping it still in one spot to prevent singeing of the paint. And I did get a few more to pop up and they progressed over time too. I noticed with the heat gun, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for them to pop up than it does with the torch. I set this aside and let it dry. It dried right in place with my pouring medium and I decided it was missing something. And a lovely lady from the Facebook group, Maggie, had recommended that I try these Uni Pasca pens. I hope I'm saying it right and I bought them in white and silver and gold and I was so excited to use them and add a little bit more definition and fine lines to this painting. I also have that I use these needle tip, um, they're, they're called glue bottles, but I added paint to them and was able to apply that to this painting. I will show them here in just a second. Um, here they are, so they're little bottles with a needle tip and the I'm so I love them so much and the little you can see the cap goes right on them and I've had these paints in here for um, one of them's the metallic one has been in there for about a month and it keeps them nice and fluid I made one in white made one in dark purple and they dry nice and opaque it's just beautiful so if you do have that extra paint then you can put them in these bottles so I will have those uni pasca paint markers and these little needle tip bottles in the description if you want to get those. So here it is dry. I did a couple coats of that um, Krylon UV gloss resistant uh, top coat that I like to use. That white really pops in there and you can see the dark purple that I used and some of the bronze as well. I'm really happy with how this one came out. I shared it on some of my social media and it's getting a lot of response. So I hope you guys liked it. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And come over to the Facebook group, Acrylic Pouring and Fluid Painting. Hope to see you over there. And thanks so much for watching. And until next time, everybody, keep on pouring.